the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution hello children how do you do hope you are healthy and you are happy be always happy take proper food and be on track so that you can enjoy your life dear children sometimes or at times it is challenging for us to see the best in the people we can perceive people in the following five ways see the bad only magnify it number 2 see good and bad focus on bad and neglect good number 3 see good and bad be neutral to both number 4 see good and bad choose and focus on good and neglect bad number 5 see good only and magnify it my dear children among these five ways the ideal state is the fourth stage in which one's relationship flourish that is see good and bad you have to choose and focus the good and you have to neglect the bad by saying this i move on to the lesson in the previous class we were studying genetics of the future the seventh chapter where we discussed about the various stages in the production of bacteria that are capable of producing insulin and this chapter is related to biotechnology or genetic engineering through genetic engineering or biotechnology we will be able to produce many new products by using micro organisms so here various stages in the production of bacteria that are capable of producing insulin based on that thing we have seen the illustration through which we understood insulin can be produced by using bacteria which is very very important and based on that experiment we understood about genetic engineering it is said that the use of microorganisms and biological processes for various human requisites is called biotechnology later on we understood genetic engineering is the technology of controlling traits of organisms by bringing about desirable changes in the genetic constitution of organisms and then we understood that for cutting and joining the genes enzymes are used and the enzyme restriction endonuclease is used to cut genes this enzyme is known as genetic scissor and the enzyme ligase is used for joining this enzyme is called genetic glue and then we understood in the previous class that a gene from one cell is transferred to another cell by using suitable vectors and vectors which contain ligated genes enter the target cell and in the case of bacteria plasmids are generally used as vectors so that is related to the enzymes and vectors and then we studied and understood about the scope of genetics where 
we came to know about gene therapy only this one topic we discussed in the previous class and in the case of gene therapy it is been said that gene therapy is a method of treatment in which the genes that are capable of or responsible of diseases are removed and normal functional genes are inserted in their place that is related to the first scope of genetic engineering and that is gene therapy i think you would have understood about it and then we understood that human genome project based on human genome project we came to know about gene mapping which is which is able to identify the location of a gene in the dna responsible for a particular particular trait and we understood about what is genome the complete genetic material present in an organism is called genome and we understood about junk genes it is we it is said that in human dna majority of genes except the genes that code for protein are non functional and they are called junk gene so based on human genome project we understood about the role of gene mapping through gene mapping it has been said that the location of gene is been identified and if the gene is defective the gene will be that defective gene will be replaced by the functional gene and thus it is very useful in the gene therapy technology or we can say in the process of gene therapy or in the medicinal area it is very very useful as gene therapy it is a treatment for controlling the genetic diseases so that is also we understood in the previous class now we are going to understand about the second scope of genetic engineering and that is genetically modified animals and crops it is said that many proteins that can be used for the treatment of diseases in humans are produced through genetic engineering so through genetic engineering many proteins are produced which are used for the treatments in the human being for many diseases so this part is very very important it has been said here proteins which required for treatment and the diseases or symptoms interferons are the proteins which are used against viral diseases insulin is a protein which is used for diabetes endorphin is a protein which is used for pain and somatotropin is a protein which is used for the growth disorder this table 7.1 is very very important it is telling about the proteins which is being produced from genetic engineering is used for the treatment of viral diseases diabetes pain and growth disorders i think you would have understood about that part it is said that today genetic modification in organism can be implemented more effectively this is made possible through the insertion of gene that code for desirable characters into the genetic constitution of organism before this one we have understood isn't it my dear children it has been said that through genetic engineering we will be able to modify the genetic constitution of an organism and we can use that organism more effectively for the production of new proteins for the production of many products which are useful to human beings i think you would have understood about it now next one it is been there it is been telling about farm animals farm animals so it is been said that genetic engineering in through genetic engineering farm animals can be produced now genes responsible for the production of insulin and growth hormones required for human are inserted into animals like cow pig etc transforming them into farm animals so through genetic engineering the genes which are responsible for the production of insulin as well as growth hormones the genes which are responsible for the production of insulin and growth hormones they will be inserted into the animals like cow pig etc and those animals will be transformed into farm animals and from these farm animals the useful products in the form of proteins will be extracted which is used for the purpose of human being 
So it is been said that there are certain limitations in the produ in producing insulin using bacteria. The important hurdle is the culturing of bacteria. In the beginning of the class we have seen through bacteria insulin is been produced. Now it is been said that the uh, production of insulin using bacteria is having certain limitations. The fun, one of the important hurdle in this field they are, it is been said that culturing of bacteria which is a tedious work or tedious job or it is a uh, very difficult task for culturing bacteria for the production of insulin. So, research in the field is being done and it is been said that medicines can be extracted from the blood. Research in the field of genetic engineering is being done and it is been said that medicines can be extracted from the blood or milk of genetically modified animals. So, those animals which are needed there for the production of the protein they will be used there as farm animals and in them genes of desirable quality will be introduced and from them that is from their blood or milk the medicines will be extracted that is related to the farm animals and next thing it is been said that not only the genetic modification is being implemented in animals it is also implemented in plants too and now insect resistant plants like bt brinjal soya bean cotton maize etc are produced bt brinjal bt is the genetically modified name isn't it it is the name of a bacteria bacillus thuringiensis so this bacteria will be introduced into the plants and the plant will become genetically modified it will be insect resistant that is the insect will not harm these plants which are being genetically modified. So, they will be resisting the plants will be resisting themselves from the, the insects. So, Bt brinjal, Bt soya bean, Bt cotton, Bt maize such type of genetically modified plants are also introduced into the market by genetic engineering. I think you would have understood my dear children related to the genetic engineering which is very very useful in the case of producing new products from plants as well as animals isn't it when genetic modification is carried out in organisms it should be ensured that there are no harmful consequences to human or nature when this kind of modification is being done we should be very careful that there should be no consequences no harmful consequences should be there for human being or the nature now next the last scope it is been said as lost child found after years identified through dna testing so next one is dna finger printing that is the next scope of genetic engineering we can see here yeah, uh, it has been said that it is very very important what is DNA profiling the technology of testing the arrangement of nucleotide in DNA if the arrangement of nucleotide is being tested or we can say the process through which the arrangement of nucleotide is being tested that is called DNA profiling and number two Alec Jeffrey the scientist in 1984 paved the way for DNA testing. This is the scientist who has given the way for DNA testing. Now, we know that there is a difference in the fingerprint of each person, isn't it? And next one it has been said the arrangement of nucleotide in each person also differs. The fingerprint in each person is differing as well as we also know that the arrangement of the nucleotide in each person also differs this discovery becomes the basis of DNA testing. So, this is the discovery that is number one the difference in the fingerprint. Number two the, diff the arrangement of nucleotide is also different in each person. These are the two bases of the discovery of DNA testing. Hence, this technology is also called as DNA finger printing. So, DNA profiling or DNA fingerprinting we can say like this DNA profiling is also known as DNA fingerprinting. Now, 
what is the use of DNA fingerprinting we can see my dear children. It has been said that the arrangement of nucleotide among the close relatives has many similarities. Among the close relatives that is father, mother, their children, they will be having the similarities in the arrangement of nucleotide. Now, DNA fingerprinting is helpful to find out hereditary characteristics. Number one, number two, to identify real parents in cases of parental dispute. Number three, to identify persons found after long periods of missing due to natural calamities or wars. Isn't it? Number four, DNA of skin, hair, nail, blood and other body fluids obtained from the place of murder, robbery etc. is compared with the DNA of suspected person. Thus, the real culprit can be identified from among the suspected persons through this method. So, these are the four scope or we can say these are the four merits or we can say the four advantages or uses of DNA fingerprinting. Number one, hereditary characters can be find out. Number two, real parents in the cases of parental dispute can be found out. Number three, the person who has been missed for a long period of time due to natural calamities or war can be found. Number four, it has been said that the DNA of skin, nail, hair or blood or any body fluid which has been obtained from the place of murder or robbery is very useful for comparing with the DNA of suspected person. Thus, by the comparison, the real culprit can be identified from this type of methods. So, DNA fingerprinting is very very useful which is the important product of genetic engineering. I think my dear children you would have understood about DNA fingerprinting. Now, indicator basis of technology of DNA fingerprinting. What is the basis of technology of DNA fingerprinting? It has been said that the arrangement of nucleotide in each person differs. This is the base of DNA fingerprinting. The arrangement of nucleotide in each person differs. So, that is the base of DNA fingerprinting. Scope of DNA fingerprinting. Scope it has been we already discussed four scopes are there. Number one, it helps to find out hereditary characters characteristics. Number two, it helps to identify real parents in the case of parental dispute. Number three, to identify persons found after a long period of missing. And number four, isn't it from the area of murder or robbery, the skin, hair, nail, blood or any body fluid which is obtained will be compared with the suspected person so that real culprit can be found out. So, that are the four scopes of DNA fingerprinting. I think you would have understood about it my dear children. So, like this there are endless scope of genetic engineering. Through genetic engineering we are having many 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 scopes or we will be getting many many benefits. So, these are the benefits or we can say these are the advantages of DNA. Uh, sorry advantages of genetic engineering or we can say recombinant DNA technology or biotechnology. Okay. Next it is been said that genetic engineering has also been misused. Not only it is being used for a proper process, but it is also been misused that is the disadvantage of genetic engineering. Now we are going to study my dear children. In the beginning we have studied that is the scope of genetic engineering there we understood there we understood about the boon of genetic engineering isn't it the advantage of genetic engineering the merits of genetic engineering now we are going to understand about the disadvantages of genetic engineering or we can say the curse of genetic engineering i think you would have understood or we can say the demerits of genetic engineering so we can see which are the demerits of genetic engineering or the curse of genetic engineering. Number one, threat to indigenous varieties. 
it is criticized that genetically modified varieties cause harm to indigenous varieties and may cause health issues to human. That through genetically modified varieties, human beings are having many diseases. That is, the genetically modified varieties they are harming the indigenous varieties as well as they are causing many health issues in the human being. So, that is one of the demerit of genetic engineering. Number two, bio weapon a new challenge. Application of genetically modified pathogens and pathogens multiplied through biotechnology upon enemies is called bio war. So, what is bio war? By using genetically modified pathogens and these pathogens they be used, they are used in the war. Therefore, it is called bio war. Bio means living, using living organisms in the war is called bio war. This becomes a threat to the existence of human being. It became the threat to the existence of human being. So, this is one number two, a new challenge which is bio weapon, which is again a demerit of genetic engineering. And number three, genetic modification, violation of rights. Certain organizations argue that genetic modification is an intrusion upon the freedom of living beings and it is a violation of rights. Isn't it? So, certain, or certain organizations they are saying that genetically modified organisms which are being used there, we are just imposing their, they, we are restrict, restricting their freedom of living and we are violating the rights there. So, that is again another demerit of genetic engineering. So, one is threat to indigenous varieties, number two bio weapon a new challenge and number three, number three genetic modification violation, violation to rights. So, these are the three demerits of genetic engineering. So, you can see here is it right to misuse technologies that can pave the way to human progresses. The answer is no. We should not misuse the technology that is paving way to human progresses. Number two, as such possibilities prevail, must we promote genetic engineering? This possibility that is misusing technology is prevailing there. So, whether it is possible to promote genetic engineering that is a question. Answer is yes, we have to promote genetic engineering, is not it? Because it is been said that science and technology are the products of man's reasoning ability. We can justify this only if they are utilized for human benefits. We must use science and technology as means to overcome the challenges faced by human being. Because today science and technology they are the products of man's creative thinking and this science and technology can be used properly so that it will be very useful for the human beings. So, we must use science and technology to overcome the challenges faced by the human being. If you are doing this thing surely this question will not be taking place there and we will never misuse the technology and surely through this technology we will be able to produce many many new new products which will be very much useful for the human being. I think my dear children you would have understood related to genetic engineering. So, that is about this lesson. Now, we are moving to the question and answer that is let us assess which of the following is not a part of modern genetic engineering. Among these four it is x-ray diffraction because DNA profiling is the part of genetic engineering, DNA map gene mapping is a part of genetic engineering and DNA fingerprinting is also a part of modern genetic engineering. X-ray diffraction is not a part of modern genetic engineering. So, this is the answer for the first question. Next one, gene therapy is an example of the boons of science for human existence. What is gene therapy? Already we have seen what it is. You have to write what is gene therapy. 
what is what was the discovery that led to gene therapy it is gene mapping the discovery of gene mapping led to gene therapy number 3 how does gene therapy become useful to human being as gene therapy is a treatment through which many genetic diseases can be recovered or many genetic diseases will be able to cure so gene therapy is very very useful for human beings next third question since genetic engineering has many harmful effects we have seen many harmful effects related to genetic engineering it shouldn't be promoted do you agree with the statement the answer is no why because we have seen just now why it has been said that science and technology they are the products of man's reasoning ability and we must use science and technology as means to overcome the challenges faced by human being then only we will be able to produce a beautiful future for the next generation so that is the answer for the third question related to this chapter i think my dear children you would have understood today's topic very clearly dear children please give me a call if you are having any doubt related to today's topic and be always on the track so my dear children here we have completed the seventh chapter in the next class we will be going to begin with the eighth chapter so just read the chapter so that you will be able to understand it when i will be taking the class so my dear children be always happy by saying this i am winding the session by the next week we will be meeting again till then take care